Welcome, welcome. I think it's the official way that we want to say hello to all of you. We are saddened, we are humbled, we are lots of emotions right now. Um, we are in Dallas. For those of you who know, don't know, because we're really talking to people all around the world, um, the difference between Dallas and Houston is similar to Boston and New York. I think maybe those two parameters are maybe most familiar to most people. I've not been overseas, so I couldn't give you a Paris to something ratio because I don't know. <laughs> but it, we're about 200, a little over 200 miles. So what that means is we're safe, we're dry. And also what that means is we're in a good position to help. And that we are doing. As you all know, we have many customers in Houston. Um, Brett was born in Houston. Christopher, my third son, was born in Houston. Benjamin, my fourth son, was born in Corpus Christi, Texas. So we're just real familiar with all these sites. We have lots of friends and family. And there's horrible, horrible things going on. The good news is the country is pulling together. I spoke with, um, I've spoken with a couple of real good customers down there, number one said to tell you that even though your thoughts are deeply appreciated, please don't send sewing items. Just please, there's just not anything they can handle right now, maybe down the road, but right now cash is really what they need the most to just help them buy the things they need. But no sewing related items. There was a hashtag they told me going around, hashtag sewing. But if we could not send sewing items, that would be greatly appreciated. Another comment was she said it just looks like a war zone. She said it's just absolute chilling. It just looks like a war zone. The spirit is great. They said as divided as our country is, it's almost unfortunate that we need something of this disaster to pull us together, but it has done exactly that. Nobody asks who you voted for when they go to help, and that's a positive. We have gotten a little over $1,200 in since we started this two days ago. We're excited that you all are so generous. And I do want to comment most in that I am so impressed that this is worldwide that these donations have come in to Hugh Houston and South Texas. This is worldwide. Ireland, ladies all over the world are donating to help, to reach out. I have learned in my life that as I am in a position where I feel overwhelmed or weakened, I'm strengthened when I know that many out there are pulling for me. So for South Texas, this is dedicated to you. We are all pulling for you. And while we are hopeful that you're safe and dry, it will be lots of effort to get you back to where you were. So this sew along is for you. And um, we're gonna have a good time doing it. Because someday when you watch this, you'll say, oh, we made it through. It was bad, but we made it through, we rose up. So here we go. We're gonna have a good time. We're using two fabrics today. One is, um, one I just put up. It's it's rose and black. This is a Rebecca Taylor fabric. Um, I chose this because I was absolutely in love with it and it wasn't black and you could see it. That was my first goal. And then also because I wanted to pair it, you know, a bomber jacket. The, um, let me show you the cover, what I did with the cover. The bomber jacket pattern number 927, Leslie's bomber jacket, is a brand new one. We've just released it. So also we're celebrating too that we have reached 30,000 on YouTube and we're excited to, to say thank you to all of you. So this is just going to be like a, a living guide sheet. We're just gonna show you guys um, how to sew and how to sew along and hopefully when you're sewing your bomber jacket, you'll turn us on and we'll help you sew it all correctly and sew it fun. I, I keep saying I'm gonna follow the guides. I gotta make sure I'm following the guides so you guys don't think I've lost you along the way. The only change, I'm not making any change physically to the pattern. The only change I'm doing is I'm going to add some leather piping. These seams are just beautiful. And with this particular fabric, because it's not a solid, you're not gonna be able to see those seams. And I want those seams to be sewn, to be visible. So just on those vertical seams, the two front and the two back princess seams, the princess seams curve and go into the neck edge. I'm going to use piping on those four seams, front and back. And then the other thing I did is I'm not using ribbing and because I want to introduce to you that this is the collar for instance that ribbing is it's just not necessary there's lots of fabrics that can be used and I've seen lots of fabrics being used not just ribbing for the collar and the cuffs and the neck edge I did even so I did a complementary black and 
I don't remember the name of this black. It's called Everybody's Something Black. It's on our site, and I'm sorry I don't remember. But it's got good stretch to it. You could use a Pontaroma. I just wanted to do something. This is just a little bit more dense, a little bit lighter. So I did also the welt pocket out of the black. I did the band at the bottom. I also did the undersleeve. I decided that I wanted to show you there's a lot of jackets out there, especially casual jackets, that the upper sleeve is the fabric, but the undersleeve is a knit. And it's done especially when I'm using a woven fabric, which is what I'm doing for the bomber jacket, because the bomber jacket can be so many different fabrics. It can be lace, it can be, this is a, a, a cotton, viscose, wool blend. This is a lot of different fabrics. It's a really cool fabric. But I wanted you to see the mix-up of the woven and the knit together, and hopefully you'll like that. So we're going to get started. The jacket is made really serger and sewing machine because it's an unlined jacket. And there's some techniques on this jacket that are really nice and really good and make it really easy. So I think that's another reason why I really wanted to show it to you. So we're going to get started. And we have a couple of people here behind the scenes. We have Brett and we're grateful that he's here, Mr. Brett, and then we have Benjamin. And one's on one and one's on the other. So we appreciate them both being here. And they're gonna help with questions. Um, they tried to convince me the other day that I could do this by myself, and I panicked. <laughs> I said, no, I can't sew and answer questions and do all this at one time. When I sew, you guys are in my sewing room, I'm gonna just sew like I always sew. I throw my pattern pieces on the floor until I'm done, then I pick them all up. So like I said, this is just going to be an inside peek at um, sewing a bomber jacket. with that center back seam is I want to give you a tip and I've seen this a lot of times where ladies um, the center back seam is the only seam that's cut out and sewn to itself any other time you're joining seams you have two different seams and you never know if they don't match which one is right or which one is wrong or if you're right or the patterns right so the center back seam is where I always start it's a test to myself if I'm handling the fabric correctly if it's shifting on me, if it's stable, if it's not stable, because again, it's the only seam that's cut out at the same time and sewn to itself. So in this particular case, I came up even at the bottom. So that kind of gives me a general uh, whatever about the pattern, or about the fabric, that it's stable, it's handling well, I'm handling it well, I've got a hand in front and a hand in back, and that's a good thing. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put on my piping So I use my zipper foot when I do that, I move my needle all the way to the left. And you know, I said to somebody one time, sewing to me, you know, why would I ever want to sew in front of people? It's kind of like watching paint dry. But for some reason, y'all enjoy watching paint dry. So I hope this isn't too boring, but like I said, I'm just gonna do it just as if I was here by myself. Except I got a few people watching. <laughs> is good. When you are doing piping, you're just going to put the pipe to edge. This is just a really pretty leather, a black leather. You're going to put the pipe to edge toward the center back seam. So that the seam allowance has, is lined up. The seam allowance of the piping and the seam allowance of the jacket. It doesn't matter which direction you sew from. So I always put my needle to the left and then I do opposite so that I don't have to change needle position. So I sew down on one side and then up on the other. Again, your, sh your sewing shouldn't be shifting. 
you should be controlling the fabric from the back. So the guide sheet starts off with us sewing all the body pieces together. And I'm just kind of interrupting that because I'm adding the piping. When you add piping, you're going to have two more steps. So I'm going to first add the piping, then I'm going to, that's step one, then I've got to actually sew the jacket the pieces together, not by the serger, that's step two, and then of course I go back to serging. How do you create your own piping? Piping is a really easy, quick thing to do. I hope it doesn't seem too intimidating to you all. Um, the black leather is, is used, and then you just take the black leather and you buy a little, uh, it's called rat tail, I think it's called, buy rat tail, and you just wrap it around. The nice thing about leather is it doesn't have, it's no bias. You can just go any direction, any place you want to do. So I've sewn the piping on, and now I'm sewing the back piece on, the side back to the back. And I'm sewing now with the piping side down, and I'm sewing on the same line I sewed the piping on. That way I know I'm going to be tight against the piping. And again, I leave my needle to the left the whole entire time, and I rotate my sewing around it because it's kind of a little bit faster than changing the needle, changing the piping, and doing all that. Where are you sourcing the piping from? You can get black leather piping from already made. You can get it from Leather Impact in New York. They're on 38th Street in New York and they sell it by the yard. And I always, always, always keep it on hand. But also black leather, you know, scraps are perfect for this kind of stuff because you can piece it, you can do all kinds of really good things. All right, so there's one done. So I just want to show you what that's going to look like. I'm hoping that we can see that. We'll show a little up close there. It's just beautiful. I mean, it's just really beautiful. So the piping is in between those two seams. And again, what it's going to do is just show off those seams a little bit more. So now what I'm going to do is just surge that seam so that it, because this is an unlined jacket, I'm just going to make sure it's finished. The seam itself is going to go to center back. I could do one more step and top stitch so that it stays that way. Um, I think I will, but let's serge it first. side. That is so pretty. It's as pretty as I hoped it would look. It's really beautiful. I'm actually going to put the seam um, to point to the side seam. I, I like the way it lays better. It almost gives the back depth and I'm going to top stitch that. everybody out there. Grateful you don't live in Houston, that's for sure, huh? Of the piping. That's the other back seam. 
it's just as beautiful. I'm going to serge it to finish it. So I'm going to put that to the side until it's pressed and I'm going to shift to the front and I'm going to do the same exact thing to the front. Except that I don't have, in this particular case, I don't have a center front seam to sew. So what that means is I'm going to go right to the piping and I pre-cut my piping so that I had it in the right length. And I'm going to sew the piped edges on. we fast forward it. So I'm trying to fast forward. <laughs> Do you sew then serge because of the piping? Yes. The piping just makes serging, whenever you're doing serging, serging is really not an accurate uh, level of sewing. So I, I would not trust and it could be my sewing skills, but I would not trust my sewing to the to go straight to piping. So what I'm doing is I'm sewing in the piping and sewing in the seam and then making sure it's right. You could, I mean, if I were really good with a serger, I could probably do it with the left needle. I just don't, I don't want to, I don't want to mech it up. Instead of doing the side seam, oh, no, I'll do the side seam on a serger. I'm only doing the front. Once I get the piping in, we'll go back to the serger. The side seam I'll do on the serger, and I'll do it on the serger first. And in fact, the serger, I'm using a fourth thread, it'll be the only seam. Does Leather Impact sell online? I'm sure they do. You can, um, you know, although I will say if you ask for Marina, Marina works there, tell her Peggy sent you, a lot of times they'll give us a discount. So, if you, but if you want to do it online, that's cool. Whatever works for you. So again, I'm putting my seam to the outside that needs to be pressed there. And I've got one left piping. And then see, we can go faster because I just, I really wanted this leather piping. It wasn't even that I wanted leather because you could really just use any piping. I really wanted the seams to kind of be pronounced. In order for them to be pronounced with this fabric, they need some type of trim or piping. On this particular fabric, I actually thought about using the selvage. But what I did is I put the selvage, and the selvage is really pretty, I cut it off. But I put the selvage in the seam and I kind of pinned it together and held it at a distance. And it's not enough contrast. You just couldn't see it. It blended in too much. So that's when I decided that solid black was necessary. some way no no don't ever you don't need to secure your seams it's it's what's in the industry called overstitching you're gonna overstitch so there's really no need to secure the seams it's kind of what we call overkill in the sewing industry it's just not necessary it takes a lot of time too 
And we're not going to make any mistakes. But if you make mistakes, it's really, it's really hard to fix. So we're not going to do that. We don't need to. Do that. I have a fix on my machine, and I, I always take it off. There is a case where I'm going to use it here, and that's when I go to do a welt pocket. This bomber jacket has a welt pocket. I do have a sway back adjustment in my jackets. With the bomber jacket being a looser fit, would you do a sway back adjustment? It does depend. That's a good question. It really depends on how you're going to wear it. If you are going to wear it as a looser jacket, then you're just not going to need it because you're not going to close it up. So as long as you're going to wear it as a looser jacket, then I don't think you're going to need the sway back. It's kind of like the jean jacket. You don't really need that sway back adjustment. Okay, so now I'm going to surge these. So this is where I was saying if I was really good, I could probably run that needle right where the piping stitching was. Uh, it's just that speed is something it's a lot faster you know it's really your debate whether it's faster to stitch it twice or or not it's really beautiful I don't remember if I did this one yeah I didn't search this one jacket body together. How many yards of fabric? Fabric is two. Well, it depends on if you're using two. I use two different fabrics. So I did, it took me, depends on your size, you probably get away with a yard of each because I'm using the black fabric. And because I decided to do the under sleeve in the black fabric, that makes a difference too. So it just depends. Depends on your size. It's all on the back of the envelope. And the piping, you only need like two yards. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just going to top stitch the seam. Now I use a Teflon foot. I use a Teflon foot when I sew all the time. One of the things I love about this Teflon foot, this is a Viking that I'm sewing on, is because it's got all these little notches and ridges. And with these notches and ridges, it's so easy to line things up. And it's just beautiful. It's really just... People say to me, you know, are you a good sewer? I always say, no, I'm not a good sewer. But man, that sure looks pretty. So you can see there's your top stitching. There's the leather. The seams all stitched down. It's surged. Just beautiful. Okay. Okay, that's side one. So that's ready. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to put the pocket in, except I'm going to finish this other side too. And remember where I'm stitching again is I'm letting the seam, seams are always supposed to go toward center front and toward center back. I'm actually letting the seam go the other way simply so that I, it almost frames the back. With the seams going to the side seams, it kind of frames the back and I like the way it looks, so that's why I'm doing it. All right, that one's pretty too. Wow, this is really fun. That paint's just drying away. I'm going to give this just a quick press just because I want to put the pocket on there. But before I do that, because I've got to sew the pocket anyway, I mean, I've got to press the pocket anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do the pocket. What I did with the pocket is I did it in a solid black. So all that means is it's going to show up a whole lot more. 
and so that I don't get the sides reversed, I just put a pin in the right side. This is just a, it's a single welt, but it's fairly small, it's fairly narrow. So I'm putting right sides together. I'm stitching the two ends. And then don't cut your ends, just fold and flip to the inside and you'll get a really perfect little corner there. So just fold and turn to the inside. So anytime we're doing instructions, we're trying to keep your going to the ironing board down to a minimal time, but we don't want to compromise your product. So we kind of group it together by sessions so that you can finish a session and then go to the ironing board and press all those pieces and then come back. It's also good for sewing if you like to sew in, in segments. Sometimes we don't have a whole day to sew, but if we can sew a little bit at a time, we really can knock out a lot of projects. My father used to tell my mother he could never, she could never put anything down. She could never stop. Once she got started into something, she could never put anything down. I can really understand that as a sewer. It's hard to put it down and go do something else. So the guide sheets are kind of designed so my father won't yell at you. You can put it down and go do what you need to do. All right, so there's my two welts, and those need to be pressed. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, do you use fusible interfacing on the primary fabric? That's going to depend on your fabric. So in this particular case, I did not because my fabric is just absolutely stunning. It doesn't need any fusible, it doesn't need anything, to be honest. Um, and so no, I did not. But you certainly could. And again, because I'm using black, and this black is hard to tell the right side from the wrong side, I'm putting pins on the right, I just put one pin on the right side. Is Husqvarna a good brand of sewing machine? I think so. Absolutely, I think so. I love it for several reasons. Not to be an infomercial, I dropped a pin. I'll get it later, but I hate that because it ends up being in my foot. But anyway, see. you see it? Yes. Oh, thanks guys. <laughs> All right, so we just vacuumed in here so I could actually see if I did stuff like that and I still couldn't see it. What I love about the Viking is the needle positions. I don't think there's a better sewing machine for the needle positions. So I'm on the sleeve is what I'm doing now. seam, I press that, and then I'll do the other seam. So once I've done the one seam, that's going to go into my press pile. And again, just so y'all can see it, I'm doing the upper sleeve is going to be the same as the jacket. It's just the under sleeve that's going to be that black. I think it's going to be really pretty. And very contemporary looking. That's why I say I've seen, I've seen them in the stores where they're like that, and I think they're really nice. Plus they give a little bit more mobility when you have a sleeve on sleeve. Would fusible keep itchy wool away from my skin? Yes, it will. Fusible will keep itchy wool away from your skin. You know, and I'm, I, that does depend on how itchy you are and how sensitive you are to it, but it does help. I would line it. You've only got a couple more pieces where the whole jacket is lined. And I thought seriously about lining the jacket because it, everything is closed up by a band, like your sleeves, the lining would, would be finished by the band, the bottom's finished by the band. So you could cut a few lining pieces that were the same as the side, the back, and the side back, and you'd have it lined. And it'd be really simple and quick and, you know, it wouldn't be that big a deal. Okay, I am going to, since I have to do all this at one time on the sewing machine, I'm actually going to do my collar. 
So I'll press all this. So that means I'm jumping around that guide sheet just a little bit, but I can kind of press it all if I do it now. So the collar, this is my ribbing. That's not really ribbing right now, it's just a knit. And I'm just sewing right sides together. So I've got two collar layers. The collar is something that I'm going to sew with a 3 8 but it can't be inverted with a 3 8 so I'm going to trim that down to a quarter inch, at least on the curves. I don't have to everywhere, but at least on the curves I need to. And I like a collar that's top stitch, so after I turn it and press it, I'll come back and top stitch. I just like the way it looks. So that's that. What else can I sew here? Let's see. Hmm. I guess I could do the bottom cuff. No, that doesn't really need. No. Okay, we're good. Let's go press. <laughs> it's just a major, a major movement here to press, so I thought I would try to do all we could. All right, and really at this point, once these pieces are pressed, really you only have to press one other time. So these are the little welts. All right, so those are done. Houston, I hope you're feeling the love. Not that you're watching, I promise you you're not, but uh, we're still thinking of you. And then when I go to press this, because this is top stitch, I'm actually just gonna press from the right side. Actually, this isn't top stitch yet, I take that back. I'm still gonna press from the right side. You can press right on leather. Leather won't melt. People think leather melts. Plastic melts. Leather doesn't melt. Collar is the same fabric as my undersleeve. It is, yes. Thank you. See, if I didn't have these guys helping me, I'd never look at the questions because <laughs> I get too involved in my sewing to like pay attention. Oh, is somebody needing something? You know, I don't pay attention. So, thank you guys. <laughs> like this under sleeve. It's really a nice contrast. <laughs> Alright, what's funny? Who's laughing? <laughs> going to press the fronts and then we're ready to do the pockets. The fronts have already been um, top stitched on the piping. The only reason I wanted to press the front is there's a, a welt going in there and I wanted it just to make sure that it laid nice and flat before I started to put the welt in. What steam generator are you using? This is a Rowenta. It's a 5030. They have all kinds out now, though. Um, you know, mine's old. But I love this thing. You know, th this one is not expensive, and it's, it's probably the cheapest of the 
better ones. But basically it has, there's a little button under there that I'm pulling with my forefinger. So it kind of has steam on demand. And it's really nice and it's, you know, there's some that are just so expensive that I think it's crazy. You could buy six of these in the time you buy one of those. So I've had one of these for a long time. Alright, so I'm pressing this collar and when I press that, I'm just slightly pressing the seam to the underside of that collar. And it's just really beautiful. I know it's hard to see because it's black. And when I chose this contrasting color, I thought y'all would be really mad at me. Um, but you'll understand. It's just pulled a little bit to the inside. I'm going to put my sleeve over there, sleeve over there. Are you going to top stitch the, si the seam where the black on the sleeve meets the other fabric? Um, wasn't going to. Should I? We'll take a vote. You guys want to stitch it? I'll stitch it. <laughs> All right, so the back is sewn. The only thing I'm doing right now is I'm stitching the t I didn't do the top stitch. So the piping is in. threads right at the time. I don't enjoy going back and clipping threads. It looks messy to me and I like my sewing to look neat but you guys recognize it makes absolutely zero difference. Whatever you decide you want to do. sewers down like tremendously tremendously so you're going to refrain from doing it but it's celebrating when I have a beautiful back done isn't that pretty like they jump and they sing and they dance so we're going to have to skip that part but it's really beautiful that's what our jacket's going to look like yay I can't wait okay but we got to keep going so I'm on the front and I'm going to do a welt and I'm going to use my front piece because on my front piece is a pocket placement. Which biker machine are you using? This is called the Designer Topaz 50. So I'm going to put a mark right there because and I'm only going to mark one side at a time. Don't mark two sides. What you want to do is mark one side the, the where the welts go are marked on the pattern. You want to mark one side, do the pocket, and then take the side that's done and mark the other side. So this is a really wonderful method, easy to do. The welt is going to go on first, and it goes down toward the hem. You're going to sew it, and this is where you talk about backstitch. You backstitch here. Because when the, the general rule is whenever you're sewing internally, which is what I'm doing now, I'm actually sewing internally into the garment, that's when you're going to backstitch. If you're coming from an edge, 
then you're you're going to overstitch. So you only use back stitching when there's not when another seam is not going to come along and cross it. So that's the general rule that's used. Oh my bobbin threads low. Oh, you know why? Because I wasn't gonna I, I wasn't gonna pipe. We can fix that if it runs out. We know how. Okay, so I've back stitched two lines on my pocket. And then I do the pocket, and the pocket is up. What? I can do this. Can I combine fall patterns in September pattern and save on shipping? That's an email question. Sure. Sure, if you can't order the September pattern till tomorrow, but yeah, you can. Like, we have a lot of orders coming in where they've ordered the August POM. And they've done that. Did you make the leather piping or did you purchase it? I purchased it. But it's very easy to make, you guys. It's very easy to make. All right, so the pocket goes on. It straddles over, and you're going to stitch and sew. Are the welts leather or knit? That would have been a good idea to make them leather. That would have been a really good idea. Should I go cut leather ones real fast? Um, they're knit. I didn't even think about making them leather. For some reason, I was just tying in all the knits. That's a really good idea. The piping is leather, but the the pockets themselves are of the same black knit. All right, so you're just going to go same length as the welt. And we've got this pictured really good in the guide sheet. You're not going to have any problems with it at all. It's very simple to do. You just have to sew straight lines is all. As long as you pick a point on your machine and sew a straight line, you're going to be in great shape. And I'm always sad you can't see my welts because I can make a really good welt pocket. <laughs> all right, so then you come back and you do the cutting. And the biggest tip I can give you is, you know, make your triangle at this point when you're cutting to this point. Make it about an inch long. You need a good pair of scissors which is your chi. So here, let me show you that right there. See how long that triangle is? That triangle is like an inch long, where if you cut and make little tiny triangles, the little tiny triangles kind of agitate back and forth and they'll make a, a hole. So you don't want to do that. Okay, so what happens now is the pocket goes in the hole this way, the flap flaps up, and all the little triangles get pulled to the inside of the jacket. This edge of the pocket, the long edge, comes up. It covers the hole. You can't see where you're going to stitch on that side, so you have to stitch on the one side you can see. And I've shown this, you guys, there's a close-up on this on YouTube, so you might have to kind of refer back to that, but it's very easy to follow. And I learned this welt method from a factory where the woman had children, she had three children, and what she would do is she would go to the factory, she'd pick up all the pockets, she'd drop her kids off at school, she did that first. Then she went and she picked up all the welt pockets that they had to get made that day, and she would get them done. She'd go pick her kids up from school and drop off the pockets. And they were all done. That's what she did for a living. She made welt pockets. Okay, so that gets pushed down like that. This is incredibly beautiful. And then you just go to sew up the end. So you're going to flip this forward. That, see that long triangle? It's so big it just can't move. So it's just sitting there waiting for you to sew it. You're going to sew over the triangle. At the same time, you're going to come down and sew the sides of the, the pocket. Oh my God, that is so beautiful, it's amazing. Every time I see these, I love these. When I first learned to make these, I used to put welt pockets on everything. And then I realized everything wasn't applicable to do a welt pocket, so I had to tone it back. But every chance I get, love making welt pockets. You guys, if you're not familiar with this method, you'll absolutely love it. You'll never use another method, you'll never look for another method. All right, so the well pocket is done. It's really, really beautiful. This particular method, because it's a single welt, 
the edges are top stitched into place. So the pockets underneath there, it's a fully functional pocket, but the edges right here are just stitched in place. If you notice, you guys, I did not iron the whole entire process. You don't need to iron. The parts of the pocket will just kind of fold together and they're just beautiful. So this I do back stitch. Full proof welts, Peggy. Thanks for teaching this method. Yeah, thanks for saying that because you know what? It was not my method, you guys. I'm telling you, I'm just the passer alonger. I don't think that's a word, but um, I was so grateful and excited when I learned how to do them, this method. I just wanted to share. And I would agree, they are foolproof. Really easy to do. Okay, so that's one. You just gotta make sure all these threads are out of the way. And I'm just top stitching those ends. And again, I back stitch because it's internal. Anytime you're internal, you back stitch. And that was my bobbin thread, so I'll have to redo my bobbin thread. Twila, isn't that incredibly beautiful? Oh my gosh. Pocket lining, did you use the knit fabric? I did, just because I was thinking how nice it'd be once my hand went into my pocket, how nice and soft it would be. This is a perfect, like, little, you know, it's not meant to carry the grocery store, but it is wonderful for, like, a little cell phone in your bomber jacket or maybe... Seems like I'm always at a hotel. A hotel key, you know, just something little, and I'll press that. All right, so I, sorry you guys, have to actually redo the bobbin, or load up the bobbin. I know, sorry you guys. But while it's going, I can mark the other side. So this is what I do is I put the two sides together and put them to where you can see the pocket. And the marks are, you're marking two things. You're marking the edges of the pocket, the ends of the pocket, and where the pocket is stitching is. So you only need two pins, and they don't mark where it flaps up. Where they mark is where you stitched in the first place. So they're gonna be right there, and they're gonna be right there and push those all the way through. And that way you wouldn't go back to the pattern because if there's any little misalignment, you'll never know it, it doesn't matter. You wanna use the one pocket to mark the other pocket, always. Don't mark two sides of your pattern at one time. How deep is the one pocket? Trying to see if a cell phone would fit. I'm telling you, you guys, I designed these for cell phones. What are you kidding? Um, the pocket piece itself is I think it's 11 inches long is what I did. So half of that would be five and a half. So I'm gonna put this in and give you, it's almost six. And what I did is I took it as long as I could without getting into the bottom of the jacket so that it will stay in place. So it's about five and a half inches long. All right, so I turn the jacket over. I find my pins on this side and those become my markings on this side. There's one, and there's two. All right, so there's my new markings. I've got my bobbin wound. We are ready to go again. How slow are we being? Are we being slow? And I, I'm just going to press this one pocket. It's just too hard. I can't not press a pocket after I made it. are in a fabric that's really lightweight, you're not going to do pockets. But I really wanted to do pockets in this particular one, so you have to bear with me, you guys. Sorry. 
Well pockets and piping are some of the reasons uh, well pockets and piping are some of the reasons that this is much more fun than watching paint dry. <laughs> Hubby just brought in the mail. Fall patterns are here. Yes, you guys. So get out that pattern. Cut it really quick and join me on this. Don't leave me sewing here by myself, you guys. Okay, so I'm going to put the welt down again. Remember, there's my marks. And the marks are telling you where, you st where your stitching stops and starts. So I'm going to extend the welt actually into that point a quarter of an inch because remember that the welt has a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to back stitch. Well, I will tell you the leather piping and welts, in my opinion, just honestly, I think it makes a jacket look like very expensive. I always have, I always will. It's just really beautiful. Don't stay away from these things, you guys, even if you're nervous, because honestly, it's just not hard. Practice a couple times, but don't stay away from this stuff, and don't say, oh, I can't do that. You can. Okay, so again, the pocket is laid down. pocket you've got a little bit of fudge room so it's good to practice on single welts before you go into double welts I know when that computer gets turned around I have to stop and look up is the fit of this jacket very similar to the jean jacket um, um, it's a little more fitted than the jean jacket is that well it's got a princess seam and it's got a princess seam that goes from hem to top, so it's a little more fitted than the jean jacket, but keep in mind, you guys, a little while ago we did a, um, I did, a webcast. It wasn't a webcast, sorry, it was a YouTube video on accessory garments. The bomber jacket is an accessory garment. It's... I mean, I, I'm, I'm not going to say you can't do anything you want with it, but it's not really intended to keep you warm, per se. That doesn't mean it won't, but it really is an accessory item. And when I say that, what I mean is um, it should be worn open. So that should change your considerations as to what size you choose. There's a lot of times when I'm going to wear a jacket open, and I know I'm going to wear it open all the time, I, I purposely go down in size, I make it smaller because it will it will be open and it, if I make it to close and then I wear it open, it looks a little bit sloppy. So this is an accessory item. It's really meant to be worn open. And so just kind of keep that in mind as you're selecting your size. It's obviously your choice as to what you're gonna do. Computer's turning around, but I'm overstitching my weld, so I have to focus on the sewing machine right now. What should we watch for in fitting this jacket? Honestly, nothing. I mean, this thing fits so nicely. It has your cup sizing. I did that for you. You know, I, I will say that I've seen women all across the board pick jackets that are too large. Um, it's got, it's a one-piece sleeve in the fact that it, it fits like a one-piece sleeve. It's, it's a blouse, but I did a two-piece sleeve so that if you needed to make changes or you wanted to angle the sleeve, you could because it's two pieces. So that's something you might make a muslin for just if you decided you wanted to do a two-piece sleeve as opposed to a one piece. I mean, it is a two piece. What I'm saying to you though is it came from a blouse sleeve. So it doesn't have angles built into it. 
that's not true. It has some angles built into it, but you may want to increase them. I need to hush up and stick to sewing. Sorry. But I think you're going to find that it fits absolutely beautiful. I'm very excited about this jacket. And I'm really excited to bring it to you guys. Because they're everywhere. They're really popular. You're going to make it more than once, that's for sure. All right, so I'm just sewing up the last edge of my jacket here. And then, I mean my pocket, I'm sorry, of my pocket. And I caught that one little corner right there. I'm just going to snip that out. All the way down. There we go. I must have caught it when I was doing the side. Okay, and then remember when you're done with them, I'm just going to give it a little bit of press. You're going to come back and top stitch just those two little sides right there. I did this one. got a fabric like this too, like it's uh, printed like this, you do also have a little bit of an error factor. And that's always nice. These pockets are so pretty. Oh my gosh. I feel certain that one of the reasons my so study table just steamed up because the iron was, the fabric retained <laughs> the moisture and steamed up. So I'm going to pull these and then just do a little top stitching. All right, laptop turned around. Would denim be too heavy of a fabric to use? Not at all. Denim would work really well. Thinking of making this as an action item for the annual cowboy poetry gathering. The ladies like anything denim. Yeah, we have something here in Texas. It's called, uh, oh, what's that called? The diamond denim and diamonds or I don't remember Dime, anyway it's out of that old South Fork Ranch from Dallas you guys it's still there but no I think it would look great in denim don't use too heavy of denim remember you can wash your denim in coca-cola too and that'll really soften it I think one thing I really liked about this whole bomber jacket was there's so many fabrics that it will work with there's just an incredible amount when I go to do this last welt pull the end just a little bit, just to keep the pocket taut, and then they won't gap. They're not gonna gap, but you know, just to keep it a little bit closer. Yay, pockets are done and they're beautiful. Yay, I'm celebrating by myself. You guys know how this is when you're sewing by yourself. See, la la, isn't that gorgeous? Yay. If you're going to use velvet, would you use it as a trim or a body? No, I'd definitely use it as a body. Velvet is so popular. I would definitely do the body in velvet. Is it okay, is it okay for a double D or E cup size? Yes, yes, that's why I gave you the princess scene, girls. This is applicable for all you double Ders out there, Ears, Gers, whatever you are. What are your serger and stitch width and length and recommendations for woven and knit fabrics? I always sew in 3.5. 3.5 is what I put in the patterns because, um, your stitch, I'm going to talk while I sew. I'm going to do the body now. Like, that was actually the beginning of the directions, but I stopped to do the welt and the leather and all that, and it's all done. Whenever you're using a stitch length, it should change for the fabric that you're stitching. So, what that means. is if your fabric is loosely woven you want to use a longer stitch length and a, a lot of people do just the opposite and it's not a positive because the stitch length is too small it will if something rips you want your thread to break and you don't want your fabric to tear so just kind of keep that in mind when you say washing coca-cola how exactly that is done do you have a front loader or a non front loader if you have a front loader 
need a can and you dump it in your soap dispenser and you don't use soap. If you have a front, a top loader, you dump it, you're going to have to use like a quart. You're going to have to use more because they're not as efficient. So I'm doing the side seams and I'm doing the shoulder seams and it's actually starting to look like a jacket. All right, so it's here. I can actually try it on and I'm going to because, and don't, you don't want to overhandle the jacket, but you do want to think about, um, do I want to, is the band okay? Is the neck okay? You know, just in general. I already know it's all going to be okay because I've already made the jacket a couple times, but I love it, I love it, I love it. Here's the back. And then what I do also, as soon as I do the shoulder seams, I'm going to put the collar on. And the reason why is because my neckline is biased and I don't want to overhandle that neck edge and I don't want to stretch it out. So I'm going to go ahead and, and just, even if I baste my collar into place, that's what I want to do right now. That's kind of why I stitched that collar a little earlier. And remember I pressed the edges to one side and that's going to go up because that's going to be the inside. It's going to flip this way. So I'm going to fold this in half and mark the center back. I'm going to line that up to the center back seam. And the only reason I have to hurry, you guys, is the crew's going home at uh, 4.30. So I have to, <laughs> otherwise I'm on my own is what they told me. So I got to make sure I get this done. And this is your knit. So this is where you can, um, you can stretch into fit. Now I'm doing um, you're going to fold the zipper back, so a half inch away. So I'm going to stretch this to fit in between the center back. That's why you want to mark the center back, you want to mark the front, and you're going to just stretch the rest. I'm not even going to pin it, I'm just going to baste in place. And I'm going to pull as I'm stitching. Doing stuff like this, it's easier to just sew. Could I close up the French dart before I cut? A cut, don't really need the dart. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You can do anything you want, it's your pattern, but I would recommend no. And you do need a dart, you just don't think you do. Darts are really not about how busty you are there. There's other things involved, like the body, and the body changes lengths in the center of the body versus the side of the body. So you do need darts. It's, it's really more than just the bust. But like I said, your garment, your choice. that laptop turn because in the corner of my eye I know that there's a question whenever the laptop What's turns. <laughs> top loader use about a quart, a quart of Coca-Cola? Yes. Um, the top loader, and, and I'm, I'm really taking that from what you all have told me, that the, uh, because I have, a, I have a front loader, but that the top loaders are just not as efficient and they need more. You guys, this collar is just freaking beautiful. Man, is it pretty. Wow, look at that. Is there a reason you don't use stay tape on the shoulder seam? Yeah, you don't need it. It's the best reason I can think of. You know, the sewing industry doesn't add in. The, I mean, the. let me say that again. The sewing industry doesn't add in 
things that aren't needed. I think the home sewing industry tends to add in things that aren't needed. Is that fair to say that? That's what I think. So what does stay tape do? If your fabric isn't stable enough to make a shoulder seam, then the whole thing will fall apart. Why, why wouldn't you have to stay tape everything if you have to stay tape one thing? And if anything, the shoulder seam would be more sturdy than the rest of the garment. So that is not a logical thing to me. Look at that collar, it's just beautiful. I love it, I love the knit. I really, really like it. <gasps> oh, I have to finish. I have to keep going, don't I? This is good, I'll wear it just like this. And you know, another thing, the other reason I didn't want to make it raglan is because um, vests are really popular and this would make an amazing vest, a little bomber jacket vest with a shirt underneath. Okay, so where I'm at is I'm gonna sew on these front facing pieces. I think I should follow the guide sheet. I think I should probably get out the guide sheet and see where the guide sheet is. So I'm finishing off the edges of the facing because it is not a lined jacket. So that's done. I'm going to finish the sleeves. That's what I'm going to do. I had one seam done and I pressed it, but I didn't do the other seam. So we can do the other seam. That's done on the serger. don't have to press it before I put it in. I can get away without it and so I'm going to. As long as y'all don't tell anybody. That's one sleeve. Look at you guys, whenever I start I keep a pile over here and I've only got a few more pieces on my pile. That's always exciting. It's like a jigsaw puzzle when you don't have that many pieces left. So I'm going to make cuffs for the bottom. What serger are you using? This is a baby lock. Imagine. And I love it. Now keep in mind I've got a Viking over here. But I use a baby lock because it has the black thread and I keep white on the other one. So I get that I'm a spoiled sewer. I really do. But it's for all the years that I didn't even have a sewing room. So I get to not have to change threads anymore. So I keep one black and one white. Doesn't mean I don't have to change threads, but you got it. Okay, so I'm sewing the cuff, making a circle. And I do this on the sewing machine because it's less bulky. If I did it on the serger, you have got, you've almost got like a wad of um, of seam. And the other thing about doing it on a serger is when I'm doing a sewing machine, I can open this seam up and fold it in half. So it's a, it's a little bit cleaner, I think, of a cuff. I like it better. So I use the sewing machine as opposed to the serger. Alright, and that's my little cuff. I'm going to put that in half so that when I sew it on, I can put the sleeve in half also. It's one. This is two. Where's everybody from? Who's watching? Barcelona. Barcelona? Hey, hola. That's really bad. I shouldn't even have tried that. Australia. Hola. 
And from down under, I don't know if y'all know this, but my grandmother's from Australia. When you're putting the cuff on, Australia, it has to be four in the morning in Australia. Oh my gosh, y'all should go to bed. <laughs> it's like me, I'm up sewing late at night. So you've got one seam on the cuff and you're gonna line that seam up to the seam on the back of the sleeve because that way it will look continuous because that seam in the back will not be visible. So just a little tip, there's only one seam on the cuff, you've got two seams on the sleeve, it's not that big a deal, but in general you wanna line it up to the sleeve, to the seam that's in the back, the sleeve that's in the back. All right, then you're gonna stretch, 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 and you're gonna make this happen and I'm just gonna surge it, and it will work. So I'm surging the, the cuff onto the sleeve. It's all finished on the inside. When you fold a sleeve in half, when you fold it, this is a two-piece sleeve, remember? When you fold a sleeve in half, the seam that's lower is the front, the seam that's higher is in the back. So once I fold it in half, just for now, because I'm getting ready to put the sleeve in, I'm going to put a pin at the top and a pin at the bottom, and I know this has to go in the correct way. But look at that cuff, it's just really beautiful. Sometimes in ready to wear, they'll actually top stitch the seam above or below. I don't, I'm not, I don't even like that. I wouldn't do it even if I liked it. It's not lazy sewing to not do it. I just don't like it. So I'm not gonna do it. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Ponchatula, Louisiana. Then you must know where um, Biloxi, no, not Biloxi, um, Pen Pensacola, no, 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 what's the name of it? When I was in college, I was driving, I grew up in Miami, Florida. Miami, Florida had a lot of hurricanes. So I can really relate to these people in Houston. We just didn't have it this bad. I don't think anybody's ever had it this bad. But um, I was driving a vehicle and we blew up an engine in Pascagoula, Mississippi. So I don't know all those P's. I know there are a lot of Indian names down there. But um, hello, hello, who else? Washington. Gosport, UK, hello. San Francisco Bay, Dublin, Ohio. Dublin, like in Dublin, Ireland? No, that, Ohio. Oh, Dublin, Ohio, okay. We shipped an order to Ireland to, earlier today, so that's why I was asking. Kansas, Hampshire, England, Wisconsin, Nevada, Denver, Central Florida. We're quiet because we're paying attention to what you're doing. <laughs> that's fine. As long as you're not falling asleep on me, I'm okay. All right, so now we're gonna do the cuff again. And it just takes a little bit of time because you just wanna stretch it. I don't pin it, just keep stretching. Don't run over a pen. What's the black knit you're using so we can purchase? You guys, it's on the side. It's called Everybody's something. Everybody's perfect black knit. Something like that. 
We'll look and we'll give you a number. That's your cue, you guys. <laughs> if you don't mind. The guys will look at you. or something the fabrics all right there's the next sleeve so again I'm gonna put a pin at the top Did you get it yeah. so. yes yes that's it what's it called everybody's perfect what's it called everybody's perfect Poly -black Everybody's perfect poly black net. What what's the fabric number? And they can put it in. It's okay. <laughs> I love these sleeves, you guys. It looks these cuffs really make it look like a bomber jacket. I love it. It's really cute. Alright. So where am I? Let's see. Got the collar, got the cuff. I'm not sure what goes on first. The sleeves, the band. I'm gonna cheat and look at the guide sheets that I wrote. Okay, I've done the collar. That's on. I've done the cuffs. Oh, okay, so I put the front facing on and then the band. You know, I could this the guide sheets actually have you putting the sleeves on right now. And it doesn't matter, but I'm gonna wait because otherwise when you're putting on the front facing and the zipper and the band, you have the whole jacket together and you can put the sleeves on at the end and then you're not handling the whole entire thing. So I've got the sleeves ready. They're sitting here just waiting to be sewn on, but I'm gonna ju actually just, see they're there. I'm gonna actually put them to the side because again, there's no reason to hand to hand the whole jacket. I think we did it on the guide sheets because um, it didn't work space-wise. So it doesn't make a difference, but just an FYI why we did what we did. All right, so this is the band at the bottom. And again, I just mark the right side because when I'm dealing with a black it's easy to mess up and I'm going to put these front pieces on and I'm going to use a sewing machine because the band is folded in half and it does again it has less bulk and I really like this part of the bomber jacket a lot of the bomber jackets did not have this band done like this at the bottom and I really like this part So you usually sew in a two-piece sleeve after the side seam is sewn, rather than sewing the sleeve before you sew the side seam. If so, reason why? Well, because in a two-piece sleeve, the seams don't align. You can't sew it in flat. You cannot sew a two-piece sleeve in flat. You have to do it after the fact. So that's really the, the only reason why. You know what, you guys? I don't actually have any pieces over here anymore. I've used all these pieces. So that means all the pieces are on the floor it's time to celebrate not sure what you all would like to do but we actually have started to where all the pieces are involved i'm going to sew in the facing and this is a really easy part because remember i just kind of based it on the collar so i'm going to put the front facing on and it's only stitched a little bit so what i'm going to do is surge it in place, I'm gonna surge the whole neck edge because that's how you finish the neck edge and then we're gonna put a little label on there. Don't leave home without labels. So this goes right sides together, the facing goes on and you're only sewing a very small section of the neck edge. And I'm just gonna surge the whole entire thing.
So then what I do, because I'm getting ready to, so this just comes like that, because I'm getting ready to sew in the zipper, I'm gonna sew a little bit of the front facing to the body of the jacket. And I'm gonna catch it right where the collar ends. And you'll be able to see what I'm, what I'm talking about. So I'm going to fold this. I'm going to fold where I've cut, that, where I've sewn that. And I flip the spacing to the outside. And what it will do is make a nice sharp corner right at the edge of the collar. And it also gives me a place where I'm going to press this and get ready to put the zipper into play. And you can see that whole neckline is finished now. The seam is serge where there's no facing because there's no facing, but it's stable. And I'm also going to sew a little label in because a, a label would be perfect on a little bomber jacket like this because I don't have lining. So in the ready to wear industry, we call it hanger appeal. It will be really pretty hanger appeal to have a label there. So I'm just going to sew that in now. Turn turn, turn the neck edge. There you have it. The collar comes right to that edge. Oh my gosh, that's just way too pretty, way too easy. How's your serger set up? Four thread, two needle, four threads. Yes, this is a four thread serger. It is a cover stitch machine if I wanted to. I've actually got two cover stitch machines. You know, I don't know why I don't really cover stitch. I mean, do I ever use it? I can't say never, but I don't use it very often, that's for sure. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just sewing in my um, tag, and when you're doing that, you're, you're and I backstitch on this, you're sewing the, you're actually sewing the seam down. So you're sewing the center back seam down to the jacket. And there's lots of times where it, it will naturally go down because of the shape of the pattern pieces. But there's certainly lots of times where the whole neck edge is stitched down. And generally when you do that, you're going to follow the surge stitch and just come all the way. I'm going to stop at the shoulder seam. And again, it really, really looks nice. These little stitching things are optional, but they sure look good. All right. Our jacket, it's really looking like a jacket, you guys. Okay, there's my label, that's in. Um, so next we're going to put the bottom band on. And you're only going to sew it onto the jacket. Don't sew it onto the facing, just to the jacket. So I've actually sewn it together and before you sew it on, you're going to finish one edge. It doesn't make a difference which edge it is, because I'll show you why. It's going to fold up. jacket I didn't really want this band to be a lot smaller than the jacket because when you make the band a lot smaller than the jacket then you get the jacket to be really blousey and I did that's not the look I was going for so now you're gonna pin the un surged side to the jacket and I'm just you don't need to use a lot of pins but I'm gonna use enough pins that I make sure that it will work Again, only because I'm using a non-ribbing. Ribbing has unlimited amounts of stretch, so you don't even have to think about this, but this fabric does not. So I just wanna make sure before I sew most of it on that it will go all the way. And I'm not, again, going to use a serger here because serger creates a bulk, and I don't want that bulk. This is going to be, the, what, the band is gonna be folded in half, and it's going to be covered. This seam is actually going to be down inside the band. 
So that's why I'm not going to surge it in place. So I've actually got plenty of room. But I think the only thing I'm going to do is pin the band halfway. And I'm going to pin center back. And then I'll know, and you can pin any intervals you want just to make yourself comfortable as to where the band needs to hit to make sure you're stretching adequately. When you're doing a center back seam, it doesn't matter which way the center back seam goes, but make sure it's going the same way at the top and at the bottom because that seam is exposed and you are going to see that seam. Okay, so here's the center band, I mean the bottom band. And again, I'm just doing that with the 3 8 And I don't even have to worry about stretching until I get to the knit part because this is fabric to fabric. The front part of this jacket is fabric to fabric. All right, so now I'm on the band, and now is where I'm going to stretch. Just hold the back and go. Make sure your side seam is going back to the back. Side seam should go to the back. Make sure to keep your 3 8 inch seam allowance. You also want to make sure your stretch is consistently even. You don't want to put more stretch in one place than another or else when you go to turn it, it'll, it'll be all bunchy. You don't want that. So make sure your stretch is cons whoops. When you do that, you guys, your needle should be down. <laughs> I forgot. I started stretching. My needle was up. So once you leave it and go to stretch it, put the needle down. Oh, whoops. It's like a slingshot, it'll come back to hit you. Be sure your hand's back here, otherwise it'll start to stitch really small increments and that's not what you want. So you have to kind of help it along. done. What stitch are you using to compensate for stretch fabric? You don't need to compensate for the stretch fabric. I'm just using a straight stitch. You guys have just been told that. And then again, if you kind of think factory, keep in mind that they have industrial machines. Industrial machines don't stitch stretch stitches. They stitch one stitch. Just goes forward and goes back. So I mean, the concept is kind of silly. It's not doable. Okay, so what I wanted you to see is how pretty this band is because what you can see is that the band has part of the jacket on just in the front. And when I looked at bomber jackets, some had that and some did not. And I really liked that they had it. So I included that on this pattern. Now the band is gonna fold up in half, but not just yet. We're gonna put the zipper in first. All right, so zipper time it is. Before I do that, I'm going to press. And remember at the top when I pressed just a little bit, and the reason I pressed just a little bit was to give me a lead in as to how much I was going to turn back when I pressed this portion. So you can see now that I'm going to turn under, I think it's about a half an inch on the front of the jacket and the zipper is just going to go right in there. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Are you using a Teflon foot? I am. I use a Teflon foot the whole entire time. So this part right here actually takes a little bit of patience, but just have patience. And I'm just going to press one layer and then I'll press the second layer to match. your band down because remember the other half of your band is going to fold up and it's going to cover the seam of that band. Okay, 
nothing hard about this at all. It just takes just a little bit of patience to make sure that it's pressed right. And it's much easier to press it and then sew than it is to try to sew it without pressing. Because it's going to make my sewing really easy. So I'm only going to worry about the front right now. I'm not going to worry about the rest of the band. Because that stitch is going to come in a minute. But for right now, when I'm sewing in the zipper, the front facing is underneath the band. As it flips up and covers that seam, the front facing is underneath that portion. And so what you see is I have just this nice straight front on here. And this portion obviously goes to the seam because I'm going to sew that. I'm going to top stitch it so that it stays in place. For right now, I'm just going to have a pin, some pins in there so that it doesn't pull on my front. I want everything to kind of be somewhat pinned in place as I go to put the zipper in because all I'm going to do is slip that zipper in. But if things are pulling in different directions, it will pull from the side even though I don't know it's pulling from the side. That makes sense. All right, so the band is all done. It's really pretty. Make sure when you put the zipper in that you put the right side of the zipper in, the right side of the jacket. So I'm going to turn it like that and place the zipper in place. And it's, I'm doing the right side of the jacket and the right side of the jacket has the, the base on it, or it's what holds on to the base. This is an 18 inch zipper that I'm using and I've got about an inch from the bottom is where you're going to start the zipper. And obviously you've got some choices here when you sew. You can make the zipper show a little bit. You can make the tape show if you feel like you want that to be part of the look or you can sink it all, you know, as much as you want to. Because I stitched just about an inch down on the front, I kind of want you to see this as I'm, as I'm stitching, I mean, before I'm stitching it, because of what it's gonna look like. So I've just got my black teeth showing there. And you can see that I, I've got a few inches left at the top, that's okay. I sewed down to right here, so when I flipped it, it gave me the, kind of the pretense as to where to put all that in. And then on the inside, what I want to show you is the band is actually going to cover the band at the bottom that flips up. It's going to cover the front facing. So I've, I've folded that up as well because I'm going to stitch from the front side and I'm going to want everything in the back to just be in place. So you're going to fold that up enough until it matches. Now, when I'm done with this, I'm actually going to put a stitch all the way around the band to hold the band up. But you have to do the zipper first, and then you can go into the other part. So we're going to just sew that very front seam on the zipper. I've got a Teflon foot on here. I've 
ironed it back so it's really easy to do. And I've got a mark on my foot where I'm just marking it and where I want to sew. And I just broke a needle. But I'm not sure why I broke a needle, but maybe it was just worn out and tired. So we'll put a new needle on. That wasn't an advertisement. I really don't change needles until they break. And once they get tired, they'll break. There's a lot of layers, but um, yeah, and if a needle is not sharp enough, it will break because it can't get through those layers, which you can always change needles in preventative, but usually if it breaks, the needle itself will actually stay in the fabric. So that's why I have a tendency to just let it go. I didn't hit anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. It just broke. Sometimes though when I have broken a needle and I put a new one in place, I'll be a little more cautious, but there's no reason why it should have broken. It didn't hit metal, it didn't hit anything like that. So always keep extra needles. of your needles breaking, you need to sew enough to where you realize, I don't think anybody ever got hurt from a needle breaking. How's that? I don't know if that makes you feel better or worse. But I've broken lots and lots of needles in my time. I probably worry more about running over my finger than I would breaking a needle. So just because it broke, you know, I just decided to start a little slower. But there's nothing metal that broke it. I honestly thank you guys that that poor needle had just had enough sewing. It was just tired. And I'm just clipping my edges because once I get to the bottom, I forget. And then I have threads hanging all over and I don't like that. So this is kind of a fun part to me because it's simple. It's finishing up the jacket. It's really going to be beautiful. And you're just zipping along. And you're a little fearful that the needle's going to break, since it's just broke. But that's okay. You'll get over it. The really bad parts are only at the top and the bottom, so we can take those a little slower. But when you are, I'm stitching from the top side because I already know this is all folded and beautiful on the inside. I don't, I'm not worried that it's not catching it. And the purpose of folding it back and pressing it is so that I can sew from the right side and I know where the wrong side or where the underside is going to be. But when I come to this band, I want to make sure that the band folded up is covering that front facing. So just kind of keep an eye on that and keep it slow because I'm pressing the front seam before I'm sewing the horizontal seam. I'm going to take all the pins out of there because I've got it covered. I'm just telling you, heads up. Just kind of keep it warning. How can your machine go so slow? How can it go slow? You just put less pressure on the foot. This is where you, it's like a car. Look, see? My hand and my foot are talking to each other. Okay, what I do here is, because I'm coming to where this um, deal is, just sink your needle down, your foot will go up, and then I just push this to the top part. All right, and then you can go on. And again, if it's thicker fabric, I really don't want to have you all watch me change the needle again. You all know that I know how to change a needle. I don't want to have to do it again. So I'm just going to go a little slower. But I do think the needle died because I probably should have changed needles before I started, but it's against my moral code to change a needle when it's not broken. <laughs> all right, so there we go. And it's just really, it's so pretty. I mean, it's really just beautiful. The fabric helps you guys. It's always nice to have beautiful fabric. All right, so that's that side. 
and again, let me show you on this inside. It's folded up and it's covering the seam. So now when I, the final stitch is what you're going to do is you're going to go along and put a top stitching right in here, but the back band is going to be folded up over the seam that we did. You're going to go pin that. But I, before we do that, let's do the other side. We're going to sew this other jacket side because it's still kind of scraggly looking. And we're going to get that to where it's gorgeous. So this bottom seam, the band, don't press that open. You're going to press it all down to the bottom of the jacket because it's going to get enclosed into that bottom, into the band when we do the bottom. All right, so now I'm going to press this back. What pattern are you wearing? Oh yeah, it's the runaway dress. It's pretty, thank you. You should write a book, Fallacies and Sewing. <laughs> You guys are too funny. You guys are the only, you guys should write the book. You guys are the ones who know them. I don't know them. You just tell them to me. But there is a bunch of crazy stuff that goes out there. I think somebody's got some stock in the needle companies. I think that's the first problem. All right, so I'm pressing this back. That's the front. I do that first. It doesn't really matter though. There's a little thread sticking out here. I'm going to clip that. And then I'm going to make this match it. And this is where I say it's, it's really worth your time to just be patient in this process because once those are pressed and they're pressed right, I think that's the hard part of putting the zipper in is just pressing it. And y'all know pressing is not hard. So this is really a fun part to do. Then I'm going to fold the band up and I'm going to fold it to where it covers that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to compare both sides. I am going to remember I'm going to pin in this facing down because to keep the facing in place, what keeps the facing in place is generally lining. So because I don't have lining, I'm going to end up doing one more top stitch. And I'm actually going to stitch the same stitch I did before when I did the top stitching on the leather. Because you got to do one more top stitch to keep the facing in place. So this is going to fold up cover like that. And the other side of the zipper is going to go in. So when I s do this is I put the two jacket fronts together because right now it's all about making sure that the seams come in together. The bottom of the band you don't have to worry about right now. But I want to make sure that this that the zipper is at the same um, place at the bottom. So that's actually all I'm going to pin. The rest of it you don't need to do. Are you going to fold under the edge of the band? Are you going to fold under the edge of the band before you stitch it down? I didn't get that part. No, I actually surged. I surged that, the bottom of the band, so that when I folded it up and it covers the, the band, that seam, I can just top stitch it. You don't want to not surge it or finish it. I don't care if you don't have a serger, because if you do that, it's just going to be too thick. So that's why it's surged. Okay, so this is going to go in place. And I'm going to stitch, I'm going to pin this, and then I'm going to pin this up here. I don't have to pin the whole zipper. All I'm trying to do right now is see that if I close this, is the bottom of the jacket even? And I always close the zipper just to kind of make sure. I've got this turned a little bit, sorry you guys. And so you can see I am. That little extra piece is fine. My seam is coming in perfectly together. Very easy to do if you do it now. And then I always sew from the bottom of the zipper up because that's the most important part to match. So match that. The rest of the zipper, like I say, you don't really even have to pin that. But I'm not going to do it closed. I'm going to go ahead and unzip the zipper because it's easier to sew it flat. Okay? All right. Are you folding under the top layer of the band? so that you don't see the rises. Yes, when I was saying that the that you're folding your the whole front, you're folding back 
an inch, a half inch. And the front facing, you're folding back a half inch. Well, the front is inclusive of the band, which is why you sewed the band on before you put the zipper on. So yes, you have to do the front band along with the front. You guys see, you, I don't want to break a needle, so I'm going really slow. Just take it slow until you hit um, cruise control. And then you can go meow, you put the pedal to the metal, literally. So I've got both sides pressed, just, you know, you can kind of look underneath. You can see that everything's okay. And, and honestly, this fabric is really, some fabrics I think are going to be harder than others. I think this fabric is just really easy because it's firm, it's just got all the positives. And I don't ever wear the, a zipper, zipper now, but I do like sometimes to close up the bottom, so that's always a nice thing. And you guys know there's no, there's nothing as much fun as when you're getting to sew a jacket and how it's beautifully coming together. This is really beautifully coming together. right there at the neck edge I'm gonna turn and actually do a little top stitch there I'm gonna sew that seam down because I've seen that in a lot of jackets and I really like it I don't think I have that in your guide sheets but the seam of the um, it's the neck edge is where I surged it so there's a surge seam and I'm turning that down and just top stitching it in you know against the jacket so that it's not against the collar and I'm going through the leather piping, I'm going through everything. A lot of times it's only stitched from shoulder to shoulder because the front facing takes in the rest of it. And I did stitch part of it down, so I'm just going to stitch to right there. But I like the way it looks, it's a really clean look. How far did you go? Um, I just went to the shoulder seam because before I had picked up from shoulder seam to shoulder seam. See, this is where you guys, it actually starts to look like a jacket. All right, so now the zipper's in, and so I'm gonna stitch the bottom band. And what I'm gonna do is, this side of the band is surged. I'm just gonna bring it up until it covers the raw edge of where I stitched. It doesn't have to be exact. Now keep in mind, you're going to be stitching from the outside because where you're going to be stitching is right above, like, or even in the ditch. You can stitch right through here because the whole purpose is to hold that bottom band in place. So just make sure when you're, so you could, if you wanted to, you could put your pins vertical and then stitch right through your pins. It's completely your call, but I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my pins vertical and then I can stitch from the front and I can stitch right through them. Alright, so I'm just going to do that all the way across. And then I'm going to set the sleeves in and guess what you guys, we're going to be done. Are you gun shy with that needle? I don't think so. I just think I was gun shy because I didn't want you to have to wait and watch me change another needle. I kind of break needles all the time, but I don't really take it personal, I just change it. What size is your sturdy table? It's nice and big it is. This is the 18 by 18. I, I think there's bigger ones, but I couldn't get the bigger ones because my table's not big, you know, my the table that I'm sewing on is not big enough to get the really, really big ones. Now, when you're folding this up, you've got to stretch it just like you did the first time. So, for some reason I can't do that on the table, I can only do it on my lap. <laughs> but just stitch it from the, stitching it from the right side, the only thing I want to make sure is that I catch it. So I want to fold it up. Now, I'm going to tell you that I would recommend you press it, 
I'm not going to, but I would recommend you press it. Where can I find those sewing tables? Um, you can buy the. We have so steady sewing tables on our website. Yeah, we sell them, you guys. If you get them right now, you get free labels. See, you can get free labels with your serger. And we ship them all over the world. Literally, people all over the world buy these tables from us. I love these tables. I think if you notice when I did the welt pocket, it's really hard to, I think, to do a welt pocket over a little tiny end of a sewing machine. It's really nice to have a big flat table. And if you're ever in factories, they have big sewing spaces. All of their tables, all of their sewing machines are recessed. And it's so that you can rotate the garment without stretching or pulling it. So I think these things are huge, these flat tables. Did you retire your Viking Sapphire? Um, it's in that closet. <laughs> it's not completely retired, but uh, sort of retired. Okay, so now where I'm stitching is I'm stitching right in the ditch, or you could do a top stitch. It wouldn't matter if you did a top stitch or not. The inside pins are vertical, so I'm going to stitch right through them, except I just saw this one I accidentally put horizontal, so. And you can glance to the back to make sure your stitching, um, to make sure your stitching's catching that bottom band. I can see that it is. I folded it up far enough that it is. You can still tell where the pins are, you can still see them, but for the most part, the seam is going down, and I'm stitching through everything. What's your jacket fabric? I don't see it on your website. Refresh your website, because it just went up a couple hours ago. It's the very first fabric. The There's two. These are Rebecca Taylor, who's a US designer. There's two fabrics from her. There's a, this is the rose. And there's also a navy, and I'm using the rose because this, this fabric is really beautiful. I'm telling you, it's, this has been really easy to sew on, but it's the fabric, you guys. It's really beautiful. I actually don't know how to sew. It's the fabric that's really doing it for me. Now just watch, because I didn't press this, you gotta watch to make sure those seams are always going down. That one's trying to pop up on me. And you know, I'm gonna tell you I think you ought to press it, but I tried to save 10 seconds by not pressing. So should I have to tell you another secret too, you guys? Um, you know, here in Dallas, what we're seeing, I saw, I actually, this morning, um, I, I ran out all the gas stations are out of gas because people are kind of panicking. Anyway, we have enough gas, that's the good news. Um, but there's a lot of places where we're taking things. They're asking for clothing, they're asking for, you know, different things to help the people in Houston. They're sending it all to Houston. So I'm coming up to that seam and then I'm going to backstitch. Again, remember, it's an internal place and so that's why I'm backstitching. It's not going to be overstitched, so I need to backstitch to secure it. All right, so I'm just going to give it a quick press, kind of because the zipper's in place. Everything's done there. I'm going to take my pins out. How much fabric for the jacket? Two yards is good. Two yards will be enough. And again, it depends on what size you are. But two yards will be good. So, yeah, thank you for the help with donations. Yes, absolutely. My gosh, all the donations you guys have given, I'm telling you, we're going to make a difference. I'm going to cut these threads. These are the ones I started with and stopped with. The last thing we're going to do, see, I think it's easier to put the sleeves in now. That's just me. But again, you can do them however you want. The jacket's completely finished. I'm just going to set the sleeves in, and I'm going to surge those in. 
Remember the lower seam is the front, so I find the lower seam. I've pinned it top and bottom. Make sure shoulder seams are going to the back when you serge. So I'm just going to serge. Side seams also go to the back. And we're just going to serge it in place. All right, you guys, is the paint dry yet? So I take it the pattern isn't available now. I can't put it in my cart. Well, the individual pattern is not for sale. We always do, it's just kind of tradition here at Silhouette Patterns. We always do the, we used to call it the pre-sale. We just sell all four of them as a group. And then the, the group price, if you buy two, you get four for the price of two. It's almost the same. So we do a really special pricing on the four, but if you don't want the four, the four will end Tuesday. Next Tuesday will be the last day, the day after Labor Day. And then we'll put the individual ones up for sale so you can buy them individually. But no, you can't buy just the bomber jacket right now. So with that, I'm going to put my bomber jacket on because it's 5 o'clock and I was slower than I thought. I didn't think it'd take me this long. So y'all know how to set the sleeves in. You can do it. You're completely finished. My jacket is going to go to Houston. I'm donating this jacket so that somebody in Houston will get my jacket. Oh my gosh, I love this jacket. This is painful. This is how much I love you, Houston, because I'm going to donate my jacket to Houston. I love it. It's great. So much appreciate all of you for not just watching, but for really being here and being so supportive because it takes a village. So to Houston, to South Texas, gosh, just hang in. We really, our thoughts, our prayers are with you. We love you. And we know that you'll be back stronger than ever before. All right. So from all of us at Silhouette Patterns, I'm going to finish my other sleeve. Happy sewing from Silhouette Patterns. Bye.